I know, it's about six days after Christmas, but better late than never, right? So here's a Week in Doubt post-Christmas special. I know you guys probably already think I'm weird, so what can it hurt to admit that I'm a grown-ass man who likes to look at Victorian Christmas cards? And what's not to like? Just look at this one depicting graphic frog-on-frog -frog violence. As my friend Kim says, what isn't Christmas about a frog murdering a naked frog for 2,000 frog dollars? Or how about this one depicting Santa merrily stuffing a terrified child into a sack? Loving Christmas wishes indeed. Or how about a chihuahua holding a rifle? Or a monkey painting a canine portrait? Can't you just smell the eggnog? One of my favorite Victorian Christmas cards is actually on the more tame or seasonally appropriate side. It depicts a procession of birds trudging through the snow carrying torches. Some people find this one creepy too. I guess it depends on what you read into it. I see an admittedly weird but nevertheless relatively wholesome image of little birds using torches to illuminate the night. To someone else, maybe it's something more ominous. Maybe they're on their way to burn down Parliament or mob the miniature avian equivalent of Castle Frankenstein. I bring this one up specifically because I tend to use it every year as a holiday cover photo for my personal Facebook page. I was feeling too lazy to dig through all my old photos, so I figured a quick Google search would be faster. I typed in something to the effect of Victorian Christmas card, birds with torches, and this somehow led me to the rather unsettling yet intriguing discovery that there was a custom, how common or widespread I'm not sure, of deceased birds being featured on the front of Victorian Christmas cards. And I'm not talking about a nice juicy roast goose or something along those lines. I'm talking about dead robins or wrens, eyes closed, on their backs, their delicate little legs curled in death. Here's one example. A tiny dead bird is ominously juxtaposed with the caption, May yours be a joyful Christmas. At first blush, this may seem like a rather macabre custom, especially for a holiday greeting but there's actually a rather touching explanation behind it. It's thought that the small birds depicted in the peaceful sleep of death were meant to appear almost childlike and function as a reminder of the less fortunate. The images in part may have been inspired by the contemporary custom of post-mortem photography. In the 19th century, photographs of loved ones were far less common. Family members, including the parents of small children who had passed away, would sometimes have a photo taken posthumously of or with the body of the deceased, so they could have a visual reminder to help keep the image of their departed loved one from fading from memory. The following is from HyperAllergic.com, a strangely titled website with some seemingly well-researched articles. To understand why you might send a friend or family member this morbid missive, we must mentally journey back to the 19th century. And no, it was not madness from the arsenic-laced wallpaper or tightly cinched corsets. According to Rebecca Bowman at Indiana University, the cards were particularly prominent in 1880s Britain. With the popularity of mourning rituals and posthumous portraits, death was visually present in daily life. The image of a dead bird in the snow is similar to the popular Babe in the Woods motif of children who are in their mortal sleep in the forest, and may have likewise been a call to empathy for the less fortunate. John Grossman, author of Christmas Curiosities, told Tea Tree Library that the cards were quote-unquote, bound to elicit Victorian sympathy and may reference common stories of poor children freezing to death at Christmas. An alternative, although not necessarily mutually exclusive explanation, is that the dead bird imagery may be partly associated with rituals which involved killing a bird for luck. And the article continues, it's worth noting that these cards also have imagery akin to the depictions of the 18th century English rhyme, Who Killed Cock Robin, that includes the funeral of the slain bird. However, it wasn't necessarily such a Tempest Fugit symbol. Hunter Oatman Stanford at Collectors Weekly noted that the birds are often robins and wrens and that killing a wren or robin was once a good luck ritual performed in late December.
Specifically, the Irish St. Stephen's Day on December 26th is known as quote-unquote Wren Day. With a traditional hunt of the bird, albeit now a fake one on a pole, although that wasn't always the case. So receiving a card with a little prone bird, feet curled in rigor mortis, could be meant to wish nothing more than good cheer on the new year. And what says good cheer like a dead bird? I hope you enjoyed this exceedingly strange, weekend out post-Christmas special. Thanks for listening.